Hello and welcome everyone uh, to today's live stream of AGH at Home. This is Workshop Wednesday and my name is Tyler and I'm very happy that you could be here uh, with us today. Um, <clears throat> if this is your first time with us, then welcome for the first time. And if you've been here with us before, uh, welcome back. Um, if you are following along with us, uh, if you are going to be doing some painting along with us, uh, I'll sort of list out some of those supplies that we're going to be using. And I'll give you a couple of minutes to sort of get settled and get ready. Uh, we are going to be doing watercolor painting today. Um, <clears throat> going to be doing some landscape painting. Uh, and if you are just here to simply watch, that's also fantastic. Um, you know, you can just sort of sit back and relax and have a nice, nice half hour or so. Um, okay, so the things that we're going to need are some paint and some brushes. Uh, so I've got like one of these. I also have some other paints in a little tray like that. I'm gonna be using watercolor paint today, but uh, the things that we're gonna be doing, you still can use other forms of paint. You can use acrylic paint, you can use craft paint, you can really use kind of whatever, whatever you like. Um, but some of the techniques that we're gonna be, like watercolor techniques um, require a lot of water. So you, you can use all these other forms of other types of paint, but just water them down quite a bit. Um, some brushes. I am only going to be using these two brushes. So um, especially like if you're going to kind of like, if this is something you want to be doing a little more often and you're thinking about buying brushes, um, I would recommend with like a medium and a small uh, sort of round that come to a tip like that. Um, <clears throat> And really, you can paint so much with just a small selection of brushes. Uh, I think actually one of these, or these two, I got. I won't be using these today, but these two, these are like kind of the fancy ones that I have. I bought them 10 years ago, and they're still really, really good. And uh, I do a lot of my watercolor paintings with just, uh, <clears throat> with just those. Um, so you don't need a lot of brushes. Um, and again, if you're kind of just using what you have at home and you don't have watercolor brushes, you know, regular sort of paint brushes will work, will work okay for this as well. Um, a nice thing to have handy is lots of paper towel because we're going to be using lots of water. Um, two water cups. Uh, one is for dirty water, so cleaning the brush, and then one is for clean water for, I'll show you how to do that, what I mean by that in a second. Some tape and some watercolor paper. If you don't have watercolor paper, um, some heavy stock paper will do fine. Maybe some heavy card stock if you have it. Um, you could try it on printer paper, but it's probably, it's probably gonna like mess up the paper a little bit. Um, at least the watercolor paint will. Um, you know, if you're using craft paint or acrylic paint, you've got a few more options, like you can paint on wood or a panel or, or something like that. Uh, and what I've done to sort of get things started is I've taken a large sheet and I've taped it onto a board because when I'm using watercolor paint, it tends to make the, uh, the paper kind of bubble and buckle a little bit. Um, sometimes when it dries, you can see it's kind of like warped. Um, so I just tape it down, and I'll show you now exactly here. Move Lampy out of the way. I've taped it down to my board, uh, and I've taped it into a couple sections. So I'm going to be working on a few paintings sort of simultaneously today, and I've got this other little strip here for um, testing stuff out. Uh, so yeah, this was just one large sheet of paper. I taped it down and put a few strips in the middle. Um, you know, you can just work with smaller pieces like this 
Uh, you can really work on whatever size you want. Um, but I find because you're, when you're working with watercolor, you are waiting for things to dry. I find having at least two, sometimes three paintings to work on at the same time uh, really handy because then while number one is drying, I can go ahead and work on number two, then I can go ahead and work on number three. By the time I've done this part, now number one is dry and I can go back and add some things, okay? So we're gonna be working very much in layers today, um, which is pretty common uh, practice with watercolor. Okay, uh, you can also have a pencil handy in nearby if you want to sketch things out first. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Um, I'm just going to kind of go for it just with the paint um, to save a little bit of time. Uh, let's see. So one of the paintings that we're going to look at is going to sort of, you know, our kind of more traditional landscapey kind of thing. Uh, that's here. And then another one is a little more sort of silhouette kind of thing. Uh, so we've got like one kind of sky background color and then we're using a dark, uh, a dark color as well. Uh, and then I'm also going to uh, look at kind of blending blending sky colors to make really, really nice washes uh, like that. Here's another one. This one's got a little more detail in it with the clouds and such, but uh, get the kind of idea. So we're looking at making really, really atmospheric uh, paintings. I'm gonna keep these handy nearby so that I can see them. Okay, so on panel number one, I'm gonna start, this is gonna be my number one. Um, I'm gonna start with uh, what's called a wet into wet technique. And I'm gonna do a nice big wash over the whole thing. So with my nice big brush, I'm gonna get uh, some clean water and I'm gonna put kind of a thin layer of water on there. I'm gonna go right down to about there or so. You could go all the way to the bottom if you wanted, but I'm gonna stop there um, and leave that area dry. All right, so you don't want too much water on it. You just want it to kind of be, you know, a little bit shiny and glossy and wet and slick and ready to go. Now I'm going to gather up, I'm gonna use some blue paint for this one to begin. I'm gonna get a little bit in there. And to get my paints to work, I need to add some water into them first. Uh, with watercolor, they always sort of start out dried out. And then you gotta add some water in. And if you're not sure if the color is the way you want it, that's why I have this little strip here so I can sort of like, oh, okay, that's perfect. Or that's way too much. Um, you can kind of decide. All right, so now I'm gonna kind of go back and forth like this. And my, actually my thing is starting to dry out. So I'm gonna put a little more water in there. And what the water does is it, it'll carry the paint. And I want it to be kind of darker up here at the top and lighter as I go to the bottom. Uh, and I only put in some blue paint near the top here and I lifted it up a little bit. I've got gravity doing its thing. And anywhere you find uh, sort of puddles or pools of paint, I'm gonna dry off my brush on a paper towel and just sort of like lightly kind of pull up some of that paint because uh, what happens is if you leave those pools kind of hanging out there, uh, it'll start to form, I will show you. That's how I, that's how you end up with like that kind of thing, which is fine. It's kind of a cool look, but if you want something sort of very even, uh, then you wanna make sure that you're kind of having a very, uh, the paint you have is not, you know, there's not too much water in there. 
the additional benefit to that is that it will actually, it'll dry quicker, so then you can continue working on it. Okay, so I've only gone down to about here. And I'm gonna leave this to dry and work on this one. Now, if you're only working on one um, at a time, which is fine, you can use like a hairdryer if you want to dry things quicker. Um, I have a ceiling fan above me, so hopefully that will make things dry a little bit quicker as well. Next technique, I'm gonna start the very same way. Throw some water down there. And for this one, I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom. And a nice sort of thin, thin layer of water. And again, I wanna put emphasis on thin because if I put too much water on there, it's gonna just, everything's just gonna sort of spread and, and go everywhere and go all, all out of control. All right, so for the top, I'm gonna to start with my red. And my red is a little bit kind of cooler. It's kind of on the magenta side of things. And I'm gonna start very much the same way, doing nice like kind of overlapping strokes all the way down to maybe about there. And then I'm gonna grab some yellow and I'm gonna start with my yellow on this side. And I'm gonna work my way back this way. And what I'm aiming for is a nice kind of gradient, uh, a blend between these two, okay? And if I want my yellow to be a little more intense, maybe I'll put a little more yellow up there. I don't know how much more intense that looks on the camera, but it looks, looks good here. And then you can see my red paint is starting to go a little rogue. So I'm gonna clean my brush, uh, dry it a little bit, not too much. And I'm going to, yeah, just kind of spread that out. Your, your watercolor brush uh, is gonna act a little bit like a sponge. And I want to have some clean water in between there. And now I have a nice kind of fade from a nice rich kind of pink and red. Maybe I'll add a little more in there. Okay, so I can make it a little more, a little darker up here if I want to. I don't wanna make it too dark, so I'm gonna wash it out a little bit. All right, so now you can see exactly what's happening with the water. So I'm gonna use my brush to kind of scoop some of that up. Uh, I'm drying out my brush in between, right? Just like if you're using a sponge, you're gonna sort of dry it and it's gonna soak up any of the excess stuff. Okay, and then I'm gonna leave that alone. Uh, I could keep working at this. Um, if I wanted to, but I want to make sure that the colors sort of stay as they are right now. And if I want them to change, I'm going to let it dry and then do another layer uh, over top to, you know, change it around a little bit. Okay, so my next, my next one. So each time I change colors, I use my little jar of, you can see it's getting kind of green right now. Uh, I clean my brush off in here like this and then I dip it into the clean uh, the clean cup to get some clean water um, now this is kind of another way I could do the same thing sort of the wet into wet to get the gradient wash but this time I'm going to do a little bit different I'm going to go onto the, the dry so the first one I'm going to use purple for this. I've made a, a purple myself. I'm going to, uh, lots of paint, starting on, yeah, I need more color. A little more of that. A little more of that. There we go. 
Okay, so I'm going to do one, two, and three strokes kind of overlapping each other a little bit. And then I'm going to rinse off my brush and get a little bit of clean water. And with the clean water, I'm going to keep overlapping. So one, two, and three. I'm going to do that again. One, two, three. One, two, three. And now over here, it's all, uh, it's all kind of washed out. All right. So that's still not as dark as I want it to be. So I'm going to put a little more in there. Get it a little bit darker. And as you can see, I'm putting just sort of, uh, just pop some red right in there. You can just add colors as you're going to sort of change it a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to my sort of sweeping and washing out. So dry that, Get some clean water again. All right, this one, I'm gonna leave it the way it is. Um, over here, I did lots of like kind of scooping and sponging of, of, of the excess water. This one, I'm just going to kind of leave it. Maybe I'll put a little sort of stripey thing in there, a little bit of blue, and just kind of see, you know, that way I'll get kind of a, tech, a more textured sky. So you'll see that drying uh, over time. All right, clean my brush, dry it off. All right, so now back to uh, panel number one, except for the little drop that I accidentally dripped there, it's all pretty much dry, which is great. Um, so now it is ready, uh, ready to go. So I'm going to do another layer of blue in here. Um, you can lay another thin layer of, of uh, clear, uh, clear water on there, but I'm just gonna kind of go for it. I'm going to throw down another layer of blue. Okay, and I want it to get a little bit lighter as we're going. So this is intensifying the blue. I'm doing it sort of layer by layer. If I went like full, full throttle dark blue right off the bat, um, and it was too dark, then I couldn't, you know, I couldn't lighten it up. So now what I'm gonna do with a paper towel, while it's still wet, I am going to crunch up a little bit of paper towel and just sort of press it in here. And it's gonna soak up some of the water and the paint, leaving me with some nice, very, very sort of soft cloud shapes. And the nice thing about using this is that it also gives you, it's very, very light, so I'll try to hold it up. It gives you um, a nice texture because your paper towel has uh, the texture to it. All right. All right, so I'm gonna let this one dry and then I'm gonna move on to this one now. Uh, let's see, are we dry? Yeah, we're dry, we're good and dry. Okay, so now I'm gonna start adding in uh, a bit of a, like a mountain or kind of a horizon line. I'm gonna do this one kind of in the middle here. So I'm gonna take some of this red, Maybe I'll make a new spot here. I'm gonna dip a little bit of sort of purple in there and maybe a little bit of brown. And I wanna water that color down. Oops, that was the wrong one. Okay. I'm gonna test it there. That's a little on the pink side for me. 
Uh, I do like pink, but I want it to stand out from the sky, right? So I want it to be a little more sort of brown or sort of purple. There we go. And I want this to be slightly sort of watered down. And let's see, let's start. I'm not gonna start right in the very, very middle. I'm gonna kind of go a little bit down there. I'm gonna go start by going straight across and then kind of a mountainy thing. All right, like that. Throw a little brown in there. And the thing about this watercolor paint is that the paint and the color will go wherever there is water. So if the rest of this was all still wet, um, this paint would be blending up and down. So that's why it's important to wait for something to dry, uh, to dry fully. I want this back here to be sort of pretty atmospheric and appear kind of distant. So I want it to be a very sort of light color. Um, to give it some texture, I'm gonna drop in a few sort of dots of color. Maybe a little bit of orange, which doesn't really appear to be orange because it's just blending all right away. Okay, and there's a few little pools in there that we tried to avoid in some spots, but I'm gonna leave them uh, as they are right now. And then I'm gonna move over to this one. Whoop, that one is, appears to still be a little bit wet. So that's, that's fun. And this one, I've got a horizon line over here that's very, very low. This one's kind of in the middle. And this one I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna start closer to the top. So on this side, this one here is gonna be mostly all this sort of purpley indigo color. Um, and I'm going to make a little bit more of that. My blue and my red. Now I'm gonna do a similar form to what I have over here. Um, and this is going to be very much sort of the background. So uh, I want this to be very, um, very simple. There's a little bit of blue in there. Okay, so that's kind of my mountain shape. And then I'm this this color, I'm gonna carry it all the way down. So I'm gonna dig right in there, get lots and lots of paint, and I'm gonna sort of just not worrying about, you know, if things are like getting a nice gradation, like if they're fading, I'm just kind of filling, filling in this area. All right, I'm only gonna go that far on this one. Um, there's a, quite a bit of water in this one. So to avoid what happened last time, I'm gonna kind of just, just dent, gently go over this with a drier brush to soak up a little bit of the excess paint. And again, that'll make it kind of dry a little bit quicker. Okay, so now back to number one. So you can see I'm kind of going in a bit of a pattern, right? So I finished up this step. I don't know if you can see that or not very well. There, hold up. So you can see I made, it's a very, very subtle kind of line there. All right, so I started, I finished up uh, this stage, this one's drying, and now I'm back to this one here. 
All right. Uh, I'm going to go with some sort of yellowy ochre. Uh, and ochre is just sort of like, it's just kind of like a browner yellow. So if you don't have a color called ochre and you want that kind of color, um, just take some brown, or sorry, take some yellow, um, add a little tiny bit of brown to it. I'm going to be using. A little bit of yellow and a little bit of ochre. I'm just going to kind of paint a little bit down here. It's okay if there's some sort of textured spots and then maybe I'll put, I'll take some of this brown sort of like put it through there. And I'm going to let that sort of play around and dry. Um, and I'm going to do one more sort of pass in the sky here so that we can see these clouds a little bit better. So with some blue again, uh, I'm going to sort of paint around my cloud. So starting at the top, very sort of dark blue. And I can, you know, if I want to, I can change the shape of my cloud at this point. The main principle here is that you want to be getting lighter as you're going down. So each time I'm going to be adding, you know, if I'm starting to sort of, my brush is starting to dry up, I'm going to just add water and not any paint. Oops, there's a little thing in there. And then I'm going to kind of sweep that down until, until there's nothing left. Dry out my brush and kind of like soak up some of that excess water, which I'm also going to do down here. I'll come back to this one and do some sort of finishing touches on there. Okay, so you can see now my clouds are sticking out a little bit more than they were before. And back to number two. So we got a little bit of a wet area in here, which is fine. I'm just going to sort of gently dry that up. And I'm going to go with a bit of a darker version of that color, sort of a purpley brown. And I'm going to do another sort of set of hills and mountains a little bit lower. And this one, these, I want these to be much darker, not much, but darker than that, like very clearly darker. It's a little too brown for my liking. There we go. You can see it was still a little bit wet up in this area. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's kind of blending together. That's fine. I'll show you how to fix that if that ever happens. If you start painting in an area and, you know, oh, shoot, I thought that was, uh, I thought it was dry, but it wasn't. 
Uh, and then what I'm going to do down here is kind of do take the, the paint that I have and just kind of scrape it across, dry, drying my brush and drying it again and getting this kind of dry brush technique going. This gives you kind of a textured look. Um, so I'm laying down some of this color, but the yellow from underneath is still kind of showing, showing through. Okay, and now on to this one. Uh, let's get some of that purple back. And as you can see, little by little, I'm gradually building up sort of a darker thing. And this one I'm going to do kind of a hill like that. This one's going to be a little bit more blue because I want it to stand out from the previous. Okay, so you can see that. And I'm going to do one more layer to this one in a little bit. To finish it off. All right, so now I'm going to kind of go, go through and do some quick finishing touches here. Um, for this one, I'm going to put a little mountain in the background. I want it to be, I'm going to use some sort of that bluish purple brownie color that I've been, I've been working with. Um, I want it to be very, very light because the mountains are very far off in the distance. Looks like all my pictures have mountains. Apparently I like mountains. Okay, and while I'm here, I'm gonna, with my sort of smaller brush, I'm gonna grab out some brown, a little bit of blue and red and stuff, and then maybe kind of like paint in some, some trees or something like that. Some lines going through. That'll give your picture a little more depth. And they're not very detailed trees. You don't have to spend all day. They're just, you know, the ones I'm doing, they're just kind of like really simple, bushy things. I can make a little sort of a fence. A little more over here. All right, and I think that first one looks pretty good to me. I think it's uh, the, it's uh, it's pretty done. Uh, this one over here, maybe I'll just add a little more sort of detail in the bottom here. So this is kind of looking a little bit, maybe kind of like a lake. It looks like I'm kind of running out of time, so I'm gonna to have to wrap this up pretty quickly. Maybe what I'll do is I'll put a little something here, like a little island. With some pointy trees. some 
happy little trees as as Bob would say. There we go. And onto this one, let's just finish this up real quick. I'm gonna go with a really, really dark blue. Notice how I haven't used black for any of these. Um, you know what, I am gonna use black. I don't have black in this palette, but I have black in this one, so why not? Let's, let's do that, so that way we can have a really sharp looking finish. I'm going to paint on a little something here. Give us a nice little sort of silhouette. And uh, maybe there's like a little hut. And some more pointy trees. Okay, so see, you know, with these trees, I'm just doing really, really small, gentle, you know, not, not detailed at all. And that is it for today. You can see our three paintings. I've got horizon lines all in kind of very different spots. Um, the neat thing about taping this is that now that you're done, you're gonna have to let it dry. So I'm not gonna pull the tape off over here, but these two should be okay. Uh, when you peel the tape off, you get this nice, clean line separating your paintings. And I tell you, you spend all that time working on your painting and then and then you get to peel the tape off and it's uh, makes the process like it's like a I don't know it's just a really nice finish right, like I said I'm gonna leave that one there because that's still drying but and there we have it a couple of paintings couple of watercolor paintings. Uh, one thing actually I forgot to mention is that if you don't have watercolor paints, if you don't have any kind of paints, but you have some brushes, um, if you take some markers, some old dried out markers and put them in a cup with some water, let that sit for a couple of hours. I should have showed you this at the very beginning, but if you let that sit for a little bit, it'll turn out to be some really, really nice, uh, look at that. That blue looks better than, well, not better, but. So you get some, some, uh, some really nice, and you also get to reuse uh, some markers before you, you know, instead of throwing them out. All right. Thank you very, very much, my friends. Um, thank you for the lovely comments. I'm very happy that you could join us uh, today and I hope to see you again next week. Again, my name's Tyler. Um, this is AGH at home. If you have artwork and you want to show, share it with us, you can post it on social media and use the hashtag AGH at home. Um, and then we'll be able to sort of share it out with, uh, show it to all of our friends. All right. Thanks a lot, folks. <laughs>